Welcome back guys, Jimmy Jules here again with another Cray Prop tutorial. In today's episode, we'll be going over the sensor prop. We can use this to detect players and props in our scene, and today we'll be going over a few uses for it. First of all, we'll go through the settings menu options. Up the top here we have the trigger type. We have two options for this setting. The first is forever, and the second is while contact. This is going to determine how long our sensor sends the signal for after it's been activated. So for example, if we have this on forever, the signal will be active forever after it's been activated. But if we have this set on while contact, the detected output will only be active while the detected object is within the sensor radius. I have two trees set up here, both with a sensor beneath them. The sensor on the left is set to while contact, and the sensor on the right is set to forever. Both of these sensors are plugged into their own light, so we can see visually when the sensor is activated. In play mode here, if we go over to the while in contact tree, you can see the light turns on and then turns off again once we leave the sensor's area. Whereas if we go into the forever sensor, the signal stays persistent from the sensor even when we leave the area. A good gameplay use for the while contact option might be some instructions that are only available when you're in a specific area. So you can see we've got this cow here, and it says to come here for instructions. When we head over to the cow, we enter the sensor area, and the instructions are displayed on our screen. So we have our sensor just in front of where our instructions are showing up in the world, and we've just got these instructions active when the player is not in the sensor area. So you can see it says come here for instructions, and then when the player enters the sensor, this will disappear, because we've got this signal going through a NOT gate, and into the text display as power. Then we've got the signal going directly from the detected on the sensor into the instructions, and you would of course replace this with your own instructions for your game. So you can see when we approach the NPC, the come here text disappears, and our instructions are displayed on the screen. The next thing that we'll go through is the sensors number required option here. With this setup, we're saying if there are five props within this sensors area, within this box, then the sensor will output a signal from its detected output. So this sensor is detecting when there's five props, so you can see when we get five beach balls in that area, the light activates. This option also works with players, so if you're trying to detect how many players there are in a specific area, you can switch this to any player, and you can say if there are five players in the area instead. So our sensor can detect players and props, but what if we wanted it to detect something specific? For that we would use the target option. You can see I have this sensor here, and I've targeted the beach ball with the T shortcut, and then selecting the beach ball. You can also select multiple targets if you want to. When we move our beach ball into the sensor area, it activates the sensor and then activates the light. However, if we move something that is not the target into the sensor area, the light does not activate. So in this mode, it's only going to activate when we drag that specific target item into the sensor's area. You might imagine a player collecting a specific key and bringing it to a door, and once the player brings the key to the door, it unlocks it. Next up, we have the Any Detection mode, where it will detect anything, whether it be a player or a prop. So you can see we can drag this beach ball in, and it activates all this other sphere, and it also activates. So this will activate whether anything enters this area. Then we have the accept target option, and this will send a signal out of the detected output whenever anything except for the target item enters the sensor's area. So you can see if we drag our beach ball, which is the target, into the area, it doesn't activate, but anything else will activate the sensor. We showed a good use for this option in the how to make a controllable vehicle episode. We used this for collision detection to make the car stop when it hits something. The final detectable item we have is the tag option. You'll find the tags available for your players under the player manager, under the second tab here, and initially you'll start out with no tags at all, so we can add a tag, and let's say this is a cop tag, and we can add another of thief, and we can control these tags with variables, or anything else for that matter. For this example though, we will be using variables, and I've got a cop tag variable here, and I'm going to plug that directly into the cop tag, and I've got a thief tag, and I'm going to plug that into the thief tag input. Basically what this means is that when the cop tag is activated, it's going to put our player on that specific team, 
or the cop team in this case, and if the thief tag is activated, they'll get put on the thief team. I've got a little setup here just to switch between the two tags when I push a specific button. And for this example, we have our sensor set up to detect the cop tag, or in this case, any player that is on the cop team. So if I press my key to put myself on the thief team here, you can see nothing happens. But then when I change my player's tag to the cop tag, the sensor activates and the light lights up. The easiest way to think of this is like players on a specific team. So we can tell whether a player on a specific team is within an area. Another thing that sensors are great for is making pickups. So here I've made a quick coin pickup that adds to our currency in game. These are the things we'll be using to make this pickup. We've got a box to keep things nice and tidy. We've got a sensor, a destroyer prop, our rotator and our currency modifier. And we have our physical coin prop as well. Our rotator isn't connected to anything, it's just targeting the coin directly to rotate it on the spot like so. Our sensor on the other hand is plugged into both a destroyer and a currency modifier. So once our player enters the sensor area, it's going to activate our destroyer and our currency modifier, and our currency modifier is going to add one to our coin's currency. I've got a separate currency prop over here, and this currency modifier is going to add one to our coin's currency. So now with our sensor activating these two props over here, let's put this all in the box. We'll highlight all of our props and press the B key and then select our box it up box. We can then close that and it'll hide away all our props nice and tidy. But first of all, we'll move our coin just into the position over the sensor. And we have one more thing we need to do with our destroyer. This isn't doing anything just at the moment. When this destroyer is activated, it's going to destroy our targeted object. Now because we don't want our player to be able to pick this up twice, we only want it to be picked up once, we can safely destroy this box after the player has picked up the coin. So if we hover over our destroyer, press the T shortcut, and then select the box, we can then close this up, and we now have a coin pickup. We can of course copy and paste this as many times as we like throughout our game. So you can see when I approach this coin, I activate the sensor, the sensor then activates the currency modifier to add one to our currency, and the destroyer is also activated, and that destroyer destroys the box that contains all of our other props, so that it disappears and the player can't collect it twice. We can of course use the sensor for basically any prop that we can send a signal to. So for this example here, I've got a mushroom that I can pick up, and that will change my character to the knight character. This is a very simple setup, I just have the sensor plugged directly into the character changes index input so that when the sensor is activated, it changes our character index to one and then changes our character to the knight. This sensor is set to forever so that our character upgrade is permanent. It's also activating a destroyer, which is destroying the glowing mushroom so that once we get the upgrade, the mushroom disappears. We can also use sensors in conjunction with our logic gates. For example, we have an AND gate here, and we can use this to check whether multiple conditions are met before the player can move on. So for this example, we have our sensor, which is located in front of our doorway here, and that's plugged directly into our AND gate. And we also have our currency modifier, which is getting the amount of currency that we have. Then we have a calculator checking whether this amount is greater than four. So what we're saying is, if the player has five or more coins, and they're in front of the doorway, then we'll activate the rest of our logic to open the door. So we have our doors here, and if we approach them with no coins, we can't pass. However, if we collect our five coins, and then approach the door, it will open. One final thing the sensors are great for is making location-based shops. So you can see we've got our shack here, and when we enter the house, we're presented with our shop where we can purchase things. We don't have any coins here, but if we go and collect some, and come back into the shop and spend them, you can see we can purchase the fast run, and that upgrades our character. We went through a great example of this in the how to make a shop episode, so go and check that one out if you're looking to make an upgrade system for your character, and it'll also show you how to make your shop location based and trigger based. Anyway guys, that's about all the examples I've got for you for today for the sensor prop. I hope this has helped you understand how the sensor works a bit better, and hopefully it's given you some ideas of how you might be able to use this in your own games. If you enjoyed the video guys, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. This has been Jimmy Jules, and I'll see you on the next one.